Okay, so let's look at writing a pattern using the step sequencer now. Depending on which pad I had highlighted when I was out of step mode, that's going to be the pad that we're going to be looking to input via the step sequencer. If you want to change that, you can just use the up and down scroll buttons here, and you can see that as I move them, it's actually changing which sound we're looking to input via step edit. Okay, so we're on one bar at the moment. So if I press play, you'll see that the lights are lighting up now and it's working in the traditional sense of an old groove box with a step sequencer. Let's just say we want to put a standard 4-4 pattern in. Yep, yeah. okay, that's on half, but we could speed it. Okay, and then we could look to actually add extra sounds on. So let's say now we want to look at putting the next sound in. So you can see now, because I've moved along, all of that's become available again. So, okay, and obviously, depending on what kit you've chosen that is going to change as well, okay? So let's actually say now that we want to come out of this and we actually want to change the kit that we've got loaded on as well. So we go back into the browse mode. Okay, and all it will do is it will replace the sounds that you've had playing with whatever sounds are in the new kit, okay? But it will keep the step sequence pattern that you've put in if you haven't got the pattern button switched on or if you've got the pattern button switched on as I just had there, obviously it will replace whatever else you've put in. So let's go back and have a look at that again. So let's say we don't want this pattern, so we're gonna clear that one off. We're gonna go into step sequence. I'm gonna tell it that I only want it to be one bar long. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, it's gonna play. The metronome's already switched on. So now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna find the first sound which is the kick, and I'm just going to draw four in like that. And then I'm going to go to here, and then we've got a closed hi-hat, so let's have a look. Okay, let's imagine now I want to put another hit in there, but I only want it to be half the velocity rather than on full velocity. If I hit this half velocity tab now, anything that I draw in will be of half velocity, okay? So let's say, we're happy with that, okay? Let's go back to full velocity and let's put a few velocity hits in. Okay, using half velocity and full velocity is good because it gives you a bit more of a natural element to when you're trying to write a track because obviously when a drummer plays drums, he's not hitting everything constantly at the same velocity all the time. So it gives it, it gets in good habit if you can start to use half velocities and full velocities. So let's go up, let's find another sound. Okay, and you could just carry on now adding sounds in. You can see every time I press up or down, it's presenting me with more new spaces to put this in. And again, it's entirely up to you. What works for one person isn't gonna work for the next person. So I really urge you just to spend a bit of time choosing whether or not you want to use the step sequence or playing the pads, but have a go at both of them because obviously you might find actually, well, I've never done it via a step sequencer before and I really like it. Also as well with the step sequencer, sometimes it allows you to program in patterns that you wouldn't necessarily be able to play that easily. Okay, so let's say we've got drums on A. Well, we've also got another seven free groups that we can add sounds to. So traditionally, it might be that you put all of your drums on A, you might then put a bass sound on B, you might put a bass, um, say like some keys on C. So let's actually look at putting a bass sound onto B. Okay, so we come out of this, make sure that we're not into the step sequencer. And now I wanna look at sounds again. So I'm gonna go into the browse mode. I'm gonna find the sample tab. And actually, no, I'm going to go to the instrument tab. And then once you've found a sound that you're interested in, okay, let's say bass. So now it's just bringing up all of the bass sounds that it's got in, okay? So let's load this in. It's the first one that's there. 
and let's have a listen. Okay, it's only on one pad at the moment, so you're probably thinking, well, that's not much use to me because obviously I don't just want to play the same note all the time. If you go into pad mode now, you can see we've looked at fixed velocity already in the step sequencer. We've also got two new extra ones in this pad mode tab, and we've got 16 velocity and keyboard. Keyboard's what we're interested in here. When I hit keyboard, what's now happened is it's mapped that bass sound over those 16 pads, okay? And you could play the pads like that if you wanted to. If you've got a MIDI keyboard as well, you can plug a MIDI keyboard directly into the MIDI input on the back of the machine, and then you can actually play the, the machine via that as well. Or if you've got a USB port, you could plug the MIDI keyboard via a USB in, and then it would allow you to play it in that way. 16 velocity is exactly what it says. Okay, it gives me 16 velocities. Pad number 16 being the, the, the highest velocity, or 127. Pad number one being the lowest, or 32, okay? But it makes more sense to use keyboard for this, because it's chromatically mapped it across as well. And if you look in the right-hand window, it also gives you what key it is within. So we're running on C3 down there, up to C4 up there. So obviously we've jumped an octave between those two. You could then carry on adding sounds on in that way as well. So let's say we now wanted to add some keys on. So let's find the instrument. And again, let's say some keys there. And let's load that one in. Okay, remember, when it's loaded in, it's only going to affect on that one pad as well. The more complex the sound, i.e. the more textural layers it has, the bigger the sound is, but obviously the more complicated the sound is as well. So the larger the sound, the longer it may take to load into machine at the same time as well. So obviously that's no use to us at the moment because it's only on one pad. So remember, go back into pad mode, hit your keyboard, come back out of pad mode. And you'd go through and you'd basically carry on adding sounds on in that way. So you would go group D, E, F, G, H. Okay, so obviously you can contain a lot of information within those groups. And effectively, if you're using this live, you could have different instrumentations. Obviously, don't forget, you can write different patterns within each group as well. So really, it's kind of the boundaries are limited only by your imagination with it.